Hello, I'm Neil Cole. Welcome to my home. Um, doing shooting some videos because a few people have asked me to speak out during this time, uh, so I thought I would. I think we need to learn from this virus and learn because of this virus. And so this video and the next one will be looking at what we need to learn. First, what do we learn because of the virus? The virus is affecting all of our lives. Um, we weren't prepared for it, especially churches. And this is taking a toll on us. And so I want to look at what, what we could be learning, what God is saying to us because of this virus right now. First of all, our dependence upon the Sunday morning event is killing us. It's a death sentence. If that's everything church is to you, then you have misread your New Testament. Um, we need to understand that the church is the people. You know, we, it's not the building, it's not the event, it's not the organization. It is more than that. It is all the people. And you know what? The people that meet in the Baptist church on one side of the street and the Brethren church on the other, or the Pentecostal church on one corner, or the uh, Presbyterian on the next, all of them are the people of God. All of them are the church. So we need to understand that uh, our Sunday event is not all there is to church. Secondly, uh, there's no act, it's no coincidence that all this is taking place during the Easter week. I'm recording this during the Passion Week. Uh, Easter's this Sunday. And uh, for many years now, Easter has been used by pastors and church leaders to bolster up their metrics of how successful they are. You know, Easter's not about attendance. It's not about uh, eggs or Easter bunnies, but it's also not about hats and services and songs that we sing and events that we go to. Easter, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus is hope for all people, and it's empowering of all those who follow Jesus. It is the good news, the gospel, that is for the broken, the hurting, the oppressed. It's freedom from the clutches of, of addictions and uh, sinful habits that are tearing down our lives and the lives of the people we should be loving. This is what Easter is for, and that should take place all over the place, in our neighborhoods, not just in our church buildings. Our dependence on a few highly gifted leaders celebrity pastors uh, is killing us. We need to understand that the role of leadership today is not to be the center of focus of people's faith, to be the crutch for people to lean on, to be the voice of God for people. Jesus can speak without your translation, Pastor. We actually have to see our role shift to be one of empowering people helping them to hear God's voice even when we are not present. That's part of the message of what's going on right now. Um, God is perfectly capable of speaking um, better than you, Pastor. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but that's true. The Holy Spirit is a better teacher than you are. And everyone who has Jesus has that access to that. They all have an anointing. So the role of the teacher isn't to teach the saints, but to equip the saints to be better communicators of the good news themselves. And that's one of the lessons that we're learning. We're also being sent to our homes for a reason. We have to do family better. The actual family, the, the father, mother, and children, grandparents, aunts, uncles, that needs to be better in our, in our world. But also church is family seeing church as a family. The one another's that are predominant throughout the New Testament need to be practiced, and they are practiced far better in a home than they are in a church building. We need to do family better. Also, we need to better be better neighbors. The world, the flesh, and the devil, and news media, all alike, are trying to scare you. Fear-mongering is rampant right now. And you know what? If your faith is in institutions, and if your faith is in a political party or partisanship, if your faith is in your government, if your faith is in your boss and your business, if your faith is in your own ingenuity and invention, then you should be afraid. Because all those things can be shaken and crumble and blown away. But if your faith is solidly in Jesus, you have nothing to fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. 
Um, for far too long, we have equated the Christian faith to organizations and institutions, churches and denominations and missions agencies and things like that, parachurch organizations, and, and their success is the success of our faith. In fact, it's not, it's not being helpful. Um, we, the evangelical church is not attractive anymore to the world. It's actually repulsive. Because we are putting our faith in something other than actually Jesus. And by doing so, we are practicing an idolatry. And we need to change our minds about that, which is what the word repentance means. We need to turn things around and not put our faith, not say our faith is personified by this organization. That is killing us. We need to now see that... Um, the faith that we have in Jesus is something everybody has, and it's in Jesus. It's not in our organizations. Um, instead of, you know, see, the real power is not faith in our service on Sunday, but faith in our service every day to our neighbors, to our friends, to our family. We need to shift gears in that way. So that's, these are some of the lessons we're learning from this experience that we're all going through right now. But there's also some more lessons I want to teach us from, I want to reveal that comes from the virus itself. The virus is a voice teaching us something we need to hear. That will be our next video.